Tips, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 2, Event Tick and Mouse Inputs. The objectives for this lesson are to explain the purpose of the event tick, we're going to demonstrate the proper use of event tick, and we're going to describe some common pitfalls when using event tick. We're going to explain setting up the mouse inputs, and we're going to demonstrate setting up the tower rotation, so as the player moves the mouse, we will rotate the tower. So the event tick is an event that is triggered once every frame by default. And this means anything that is attached to the event tick is going to be triggered every single frame of the game. Now, this can be adjusted so that you can manually trigger at a set interval in seconds, and it can also be enabled and disabled during runtime. The event tick is built into every actor class by default. And it can be a very useful event, especially when you're troubleshooting or prototyping something to make sure that functionality is there. It is also possible that you need to put events on the tick. However, there are some pitfalls. Now, because the event tick is triggered every frame, unless you manually override it, all of that functionality that's built into the event tick is going to fire every single frame which means if you have a lot of events or a lot of programming on the event tick, this could cause performance issues with your game. So really the recommendation is usually to only put things that absolutely need to be on the event tick there. And really it's important to use it sparingly or when no other option is available. So next let's get back into our project and we're gonna demonstrate how to set up our tower rotation. Here I am back in Unreal Engine and we could see our little tower here just as we left it. Let's go back into our tower actor and let's add a few more things. The first thing we're gonna need is some type of visual representation for our game. If you remember from the previous project, we did this by first adding a spring arm, which just allows us to have a little bit more control over the camera. And then to that spring arm, we added a camera. For this one, we wanna have a similar top-down view to the first project. So let's start by rotating our camera to about minus 70 on the y-axis. Then let's take that spring arm and we're gonna bring it way out. Let's start with 5,000. And now we need a way to take control of this tower when we start to play our game. For that, let's create a game mode. So in our content browser, in our blueprints folder, we're going to right click, select blueprint class, and then we'll select game mode base. And for this, we could just call it game mode. If you remember from the previous week, our game mode will allow us to set up our default classes in this level. Let's start by going to project settings, maps and modes, and let's change the default game mode to the one that we just made. If we select this drop down here, we'll be given access to all of the base classes for this game mode. And for our default pawn class, let's select player tower. And here back in our level, let's take our player start and just make sure it's out of the ground a little bit so that we're not spawned into the ground. We wanna be spawned kind of right on top of the ground. And when we hit play, we could see that we have our tower here in the middle of the level. If you want, you can eject and get a better look at things. I could see here we're just a little bit too high off the ground and we could see this with our shadow. So let's bring this down just a little bit. And this looks pretty good. It's floating a little bit, but it's close enough. And that is when it's about 20 units. So now let's talk about how do we make it move. We go back into our tower class and here we're gonna use the event tick and we're gonna define how our tower can rotate. And for that, we need to actually be rotating the tower. So let's take our static mesh, which is the tower, and we'll drag it in. And then we're gonna say set world rotation. And we can see that this takes an input of a target, which is going to be our static mesh in this case, and a rotation. We could do the drop down and see a couple more options. If you want to learn more about these, you can hover over them or you can read the Unreal documentation on this node. We're not going to use them for this lesson though, so we'll just close that. 
and let's drag this right into our set world rotation. So every tick, we're going to check where our rotation is and we're going to set it. And we want to do this based upon the current velocity of the mouse. So we can do this by saying get player controller, which is who's controlling the mouse. Then we can pull off this and say get input mouse delta. This means every time that the mouse has moved, we're going to see how much it moved by. And you see we have two outputs here, an X and a Y. These correspond to the X and Y movement of our mouse, X being horizontal, Y being vertical. So we have our delta of our mouse. This means the direction that the mouse is heading. So as I move my mouse, what direction? And we want to know the angle of this so that we can match that angle to the rotation of the character. And for this, we can use a pre-built math function called atan2 in degrees. Now, I don't want to get too deep into math, but I did just want to give a little brief explanation of why we're using this function. I found this little description of atan2 and what it means. If you want to learn more about it, I encourage you to do a little bit more research. But as we can see here, as we draw a vector from 0, 0, the atan2 will return the angle of that vector. So if we were to use this in the functionality of setting the rotation of our character, as I move my mouse along this vector, we're going to get the return of this angle. And then we can use this angle to set the rotation of our character. So let's drag off of our rotation here on set world rotation. Let's do make rotator. This allows us to take three inputs and make a rotation vector from it. But we only want to use the Z rotation, which is the yaw. And this will affect the direction that our tower is facing. So we could take this and drag it directly into there. We'll compile. And when we press play, We'll notice now that whatever direction my mouse is going, the tower will also point. And you can notice it's a little bit jittery. It's not exactly the functionality we want. And then as soon as I stop moving my mouse, it'll go right back to zero again. So this obviously isn't functional for our game. We could do a few things to clean this up though. The first thing we can do is instead of going directly to this new rotation, we could move to that rotation slowly. And we can do it based upon the rotation that the character is currently looking. So let's grab a copy of our static mesh. I have it selected and I'll hit control D to make a copy of it. And then let's get the current rotation. And we can interpolate from this rotation to our new rotation using the R interp2 node. And we can see that this takes a few inputs. We're gonna have our current rotation and our target rotation, which will be the direction that our mouse is moving. We also have a delta time and an interpolation speed. Let's drag our output into our new rotation. And let's talk about what we need for these other two inputs. Well, the delta time, we can actually just use get world delta seconds. And if we hover over here, we can see returns the frame delta time in seconds adjusted by time dilation. If you remember, I said that the event tick is going to fire every frame. And what we don't want is someone that's playing this game at 15 frames per second to have a very different experience than someone that's playing at 120 frames per second. So what we can do is use our delta time, which means the time between each frame so from when frame one fires to when frame two fires, and we can use that to calculate the amount that it should move based upon that time. This means that regardless of your frame rate, you're gonna have the exact same experience while playing this game. In the interpolation speed, if we hover over this, we can see that it says, if the speed given is zero, then it jumps to the target. We want it to move a little bit slowly as it's rotating but not so slowly as it feels sluggish to the player. Let's start by just assigning a value of three and see where that gets us. Let's compile and press play. And now as we move our mouse, we can see it's much more fluid. It feels a lot better. 
But we'll notice that when I stop moving the mouse, we're still gonna snap back to zero. And that's because currently, when our mouse velocity is zero, meaning when our mouse is not moving and we have no delta from our mouse, the ATAN is going to be zero, which means it's going to set our rotation to zero, so our tower is going to look back towards zero. Let's make a little bit more room for ourselves. So we're gonna drag all this, we're gonna pull it down a little bit, and let's drag off of our event tick node and type B for branch, and now we'll put a branch in here. And a branch, if we don't already know this, takes an input of a Boolean, which can be either true or false, and then it has two different execution pins based upon the state of that Boolean. So if the Boolean is true, we're gonna go with the first branch. If the Boolean is false, we'll go with the second branch. And we can actually drag off this and have two completely different functionalities that would be set based upon the condition of this Boolean. Let's delete that and we'll have it set like this. Now what we can actually do is do a check that if the mouse is moving, we're gonna set the rotation, but when the mouse stops moving, we will no longer update this and we'll leave it where it currently is. For this, let's copy these two nodes and we wanna take our X and Y and make a vector. And for this, we can use a vector 2D. So if we type vector or make, we can see make vector 2D. And a vector, if we see here, is just a variable that has two separate values, an X and a Y. So we could take our delta X and delta Y and plug them both in, and then we get one vector. We could then check the length of this vector with a vector 2D length. And without getting too into the math of this, when our mouse is moving now, this will return a value greater than zero. So we pull off this and select greater than, we'll see we have a couple nodes that we can pick from. We'll select greater and plug this Boolean into our branch. And now when this vector is greater than zero, we'll adjust the rotation. If it goes to zero, we'll stop adjusting the rotation. Let's compile and see how this works. Now, when I move my mouse, my tower is rotating, and when I stop, it'll stop rotating based upon wherever that last input was. But we can see now that we're starting to get a lot here, and we wanna maybe clean this up. So in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about functions and how they can help us clean our code and make reusable blocks of code that we can use throughout our game.